Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Summer Seascape Swing. <laughs> I'm sipping on some cherry tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, Mars black, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, deep yellow, fluorescent pink, cobalt blue, and green oxide. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush and I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I'll refer to these as small, medium and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same type and size of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our sky and the base coat for our water and our beach. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my medium brush to mix some colors so I can show you what I'm gonna be doing with that. So I'm going to have my sky coming almost halfway down my canvas, and then I'll have my water and it'll um, blend into my beach sand. So I'm gonna create three custom colors. I'm gonna create a dark blue for the sky, a light blue for my water, and then a nice light tannish gray for my um, beach sand. So I have magically pre-mixed these colors and I'll show you where I'm headed with them. So this is gonna be my dark blue for the sky. So what I did was I took my cobalt blue and added just a teeny tiny dot of black paint into it. The black is very powerful and it will turn it dark blue really quickly. I would proceed with caution, which is why I just, I need to add a tiny bit more black into mine so I can get it as dark as I want. And that's about the, the shade of that that I'm going for. I'm gonna wash and dry my um, brush so I can show you the next color that I'll be going for. So the next color is gonna be just a light blue for my water. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of this custom blue that I created for the sky, and I'm gonna add white paint to it. So this is just making a real light version of what I had done in the sky. So you could make any kind of light version you want. This is just a nice, easy way to um, have a nice soft blue. I mean, keep adding a little bit of white there. I added a little bit too much of my custom blue, so you only need a tiny bit of the, of the blue added to your white. There we go, that's, that's looking pretty good. That's about where I'm headed for that. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and give myself a custom tan for my sand. So I wash and dry my brush. This is the custom color I'm going for. It's very close to white. It's just a little bit darker. Think of it like a, a beige type of color. So I'm gonna use a lot of white and just a tiny bit of brown and a tiny bit of black. So what I'm doing is just making this really pale, 
tannish gray kind of color as my base coat for my beach sand. I want this to look like really nice white soft beach sand so I'm going to go for a nice light color as the base coat. So once I've got that done I'm going to put my medium brush away, take out my large brush so I can start my painting process. I'm going to pick up some of my custom dark blue and what I'm first going to do is give myself a couple of markers. So I'm going to find myself about halfway left or right and I'm going to come on the left, halfway from the top to the bottom on the left hand side and I'm going to come up about two inches from that make myself a little bit of a marker. Then I'm going to use my brush or some kind of measuring tool to see how far down I came and I can see I went right to here. So I can do, I'm going to mark my other side at about the same height. So right about here is where I'm headed for that. So now that I've got my two markers in there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting in my sky. So I'm going to have it really, um, a lot of this dark blue up at the top. I'm going to get it to go a little bit lighter uh, about two-thirds of the way down that sky and then I'll get it to go a little bit back a little bit darker as we go towards that horizon line. So I'm just picking up my dark blue. I'm going to pick up a, a more of my dark blue right now and kind of skirt it across my horizon line. So I've got my dark blue. I'm just going to connect my dots like this and I don't need to go very far up into my sky with this dark blue at the bottom before I start um, transitioning into my lighter tone. This is just going to give you a nice dramatic um, horizon line. Now what I'm doing is I'm picking up my dark blue plus a little bit of white paint on my brush. So I'm going to get these sections to connect. So dark blue plus a little bit of white on my brush. I'm getting this to blend in with my upper section in through here my bottom section in through there. I'm going to put some more dark blue plus a little bit of white on my brush and this is just going to give us a lighter area in the center of that sky. And you can get yours to go as light as you want or as dark as you want. I'm just giving myself a little bit of atmospheric dimension in the center part of that sky so it, so it doesn't look flat. This just helps to add those little bits of information and make that sky look a little bit more dimensional as opposed to just a flat blue sky. And then I'm going to just kind of go back and forth with this and you might feel that you want to do two coats on it once it dries. You might see a little bit of streaking in it and if that's the case and you want to do a second coat feel free to do so. Just picking up a little bit more of my dark blue plus white. I want this side to be just a little bit lighter in through here. Or if you wanted one side to look like it's, you know, a little bit more sunny on that side, you can certainly add a little bit more white like I'm doing in through here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush in preparation for my base coat of my water. So this is looking pretty good. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to pick up some of that light blue color. So the light blue that we had created, I'm going to find myself my center of my canvas on this left hand side and come down from that about two inches, somewhere in through here. And then over on the right hand side, I'm actually going to come up from the bottom, I would say about four or five inches, somewhere in through here. This is going to give me kind of my diagonal um, place where I'm going to meet my water to my beach. So I'm going to just kind of lightly go back and forth in through here to get kind of a, just a real light, um, soft edge to my water in through there, something like that. And then I'm going to bring this light blue all the way up to my horizon line. You might find that you want to add other colors to your water. You might want yours lighter or darker than mine, or you might have, want to have some waves evident. We are going to put some information down at the bottom of the water, but as you're doing this top portion, you can really get it to look as tranquil and as still as you want or have more um, more waves and stuff. So as I get up to my horizon line, I'm going to just kind of go back and forth with my brush to give myself a nice soft line at the horizon. You could certainly um, pull out a ruler or you can tape off the edge of your horizon line to make sure that it's nice and straight. But sometimes if you just skirt that brush back and forth 
going right along that line that you had wanted. If you go kind of quickly and keep your eye on the prize, which is the, the height of it on one side versus the other side, that can sometimes just give you a nice clean line or a nice straight and balanced line. And then after you're done and after it dries, you can certainly go in and clean it up with you know either your dark blue or your light blue um, once it's dried and you see if you have any little adjusting that you want to do to it. But that's looking pretty good for me. And then what I'm going to do is as I'm coming back down towards my um, beach, I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to kind of give it a good squeeze in my paper towel to get some of that blue off, but not all of it. And then I'm picking up my custom tan that we created for the beach. And then I'm just going to kind of go back and forth overlapping it into the edge of my water in through here so you'll get the, you'll see those two colors intermingling with one another they don't have to be perfect a perfect blend i'm just getting them to look like they're merging with one another and they're starting to talk to each other the water is coming on top of the sand and it's starting to give it that nice you know overlapping kind of wet look to the sand and then as I come down past that area I'm just going to keep picking up my sand color I don't need to do anything special with this at this point because we are going to be doing some additional layering on the sand and putting some more information into the sand so because I didn't wash my brush if you still detect a little bit of your water blue in your sand at this point it's okay but if you um, have a lot of blue as you're coming down towards the bottom of your canvas you could certainly wash and dry your brush to get some um, some clean sand on at the bottom but mine's looking pretty good to me so I'm gonna just let it let it ride the way that it is and then we're going to be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can uh, wash actually yeah let's use this brush we'll use the same brush so you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our water and our beach sand I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. I do recommend before you start this step that you make sure your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry. Or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm going to be doing I'm is not much. <laughs> I just want to kind of give some gentle ripply kind of waves just rolling into the sand we're not going to see a distinct much of a distinct kind of edge of the sand to the water because our woman's going to be here we're going to have a big shadow on it so we're just looking for minimal detail so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be using mostly white but i may tap into my beach sand color maybe a little bit of my water color and maybe a little bit of brown too to just give a little bit of dimension so I'm going to be um, creating a pretty bright uh, kind of, I would say, little ripple or wave where the um, water meets the sand and then we'll create some additional little almost white caps as they're kind of rolling in. So I'm going to pick up a, a little bit of white paint and I'm going to give myself a couple of markers. So on the left hand side, I'm going to give myself a, a marker about where these two um, sections converged so maybe this is about halfway up or down my canvas I'm a couple inches below that so somewhere in this vicinity and then down on the right hand side again somewhere in the same vicinity that we had it earlier so this will show the two um, areas kind of crossing over and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of take this line I don't want it really uh, a perfect line I want there to be some little bit of movement in it so it's not just white or just straight and then now that I've got that on there I'm going to use much more white and I'm going to get the edge of this uh, beach area to be really really light so I'm using a bunch of white and I'm just kind of using a circular type of brush stroke so it gives me a little bit of texture but I don't need it to um, 
really have a lot of texture because I'm using this bristle brush it will allow me to kind of rub it in and still see some of that tan underneath it as I'm coming down towards the bottom of my canvas I'm going to let myself run out of paint so that way it'll get a little bit darker as I go down towards the bottom of my canvas and what what's happening is my white is seeing some of that tan underneath and it's providing this really beautiful light sand color. So it's not all the way white yet. It's pretty close, but it's not, we still have room to get brighter if we wanted to. So that's working pretty good for me. Now what I'm gonna do is with the remnants on my brush, I'm gonna start adding some little ripply kind of waves in my water. So I'm just gonna take my brush and kind of push it in like this. And this is gonna give me some nice lighter areas going into that water and picking up just a teeny bit more white paint right now and just giving myself, I like to, I don't know if I can show this really well here. I got my brush, I kind of push it in towards that, um, the shoreline and it has more of a firm edge here, which makes it look like it's kind of shadowed underneath or the water is receding. And then I gently kind of rub it back into the water. So back towards the deeper part of the ocean. So what that does is it allows it to kind of look like the water's coming in from the ocean and then maybe it came in and it's receding back out. So it's just, just my little way of doing it. You can certainly find your own unique way. And then I just kind of keep adding little bits over here on the left-hand side. Again, I know that a lot of this may be covered by my, my woman. Um, but just giving myself little bits in through here so we can so we can see some motion in that ocean and then if you felt after you you're done this that you wanted any more information you could certainly pick up a little bit of brown and make underneath these waves a little bit darker that would give you more of a um, more of a wet look to the water or you could pick up a little bit of brown and your beach sand like I just did I picked up a little bit of brown and beach sand and you could get little areas like this to just kind of look like they're going into one another a little bit more or you could pick up a tiny bit of your light blue so these are just ways that you can get the water to blend in with that sand. So it just kind of looks like they're really converging and merging into one another. And that's looking pretty good for me. I'm going to be, um, you know, I might let it dry for a minute, see if there's any additional little fiddles or touches that I want to do. Um, and then I'm going to be using my medium brush for the next step. So once you get this done, you can put your large brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint a palm tree shadow on our sand. So I wanna give the illusion that there is a big, huge palm tree that is holding up this beautiful swing. So to give the illusion of that, I can put a big shadow of its top on the sand and then we don't have to paint the whole tree up top. <laughs> so it gives it a, a nice summery illusion. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm gonna use are black, brown, white, and possibly some of my sand color if I need to um, blend any areas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first pre-mix myself a gray color, which I've already done, but I'll show you how to get there. So this is the gray that I'm going for. How I got to that was I used brown, a touch of black, and quite a bit of white. And this is gonna give me a nice warm gray color. So I definitely want it darker than my sand color. And I don't, I like the brown in it because that gives it a nice um, earthy tone to it like it is the sand only darker. So that's where I come up with the little bit of a brown tone to it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I have that color on my brush. I'm gonna add a touch of water on my brush and then tap it off on my paper towel. So what I do is I just dip my brush in my water and then tap it off on my paper towel. So I have a lot of moisture in my brush. I'm gonna have kind of the top or the center of my tree somewhere in through here. So this is maybe about three or four inches from the bottom of my canvas and maybe about two inches from the center. So somewhere in through here is where I'm gonna have mine. And really what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this gray paint to give myself an, a skewed uh, 
kind of silhouette of the top of the tree. So I'm going to take this and just kind of give myself where I want my, my branches to kind of splay out. And because it is a shadow, it can really take on you know, a very skewed look. It can be long, it can be flat looking, it can have all kinds of, you know, weird little branches sticking out, but I'm gonna just kind of give myself the essence of my branches first. And again, I'm using my gray plus water on my brush to give me um, the, the beginning of this or the kind of my footprint that I can follow along. I'm giving really loose, loose edges to it so I don't so I don't overdo it and I want it to kind of be on the see-through side these ones are going to be really skewed over in through here so these are going to be really long just going to kind of pull them out over towards this side maybe even go all the way just proceeding with caution there we go you can always pull bring back some of your um, beach sand if you go too much but this is just going to kind of get me started there we go so that's that's pretty good so now i'm just going to use a little bit more of that gray so i can have a pretty dark center to this i'm going to have my shadow kind of going lighter as it goes away from my um from the center so now i'm just kind of pulling out these messy little um palm fronds or the the little tips or uh leaves on the palm fronds and you can bring out little branches and again my trick here is I've got water on my brush so the water is giving allowing me to make these different tonal values of this gray so the the more water I have on my brush the more see-through my shadow is going to be so this is just going to kind of help me to establish my um my rhythm or my um the the essence of this shadow and it will allow me to just build my way to any darker areas or any lighter areas that I may want. So again, this is a shadow. So all of my little marks can be really soft. They can blend into that, um, into the sand a little bit if I want them to. I can have, I'm, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of a darker tone so a little bit of black goes on my brush with a touch of that gray maybe a little bit darker in through the center area just to give it a little bit more darkness in through here and you can just kind of keep keep playing with these values so if you want it to be a little bit more dramatic get it to go a little bit darker in the middle if you want it to go a little bit lighter around those edges feel free to use a little bit more water on your brush I'm going to pick up a touch of brown and water now. So I washed my brush and now I'm picking up a touch of brown and water. And this is going to give me just, again, little, little different tones in this shadow. And again, have fun with it. You don't need to do anything really dramatic, just something that's going to give us the essence of the, of the tree branches casting a shadow on that sand. If you need to or want to, I'm going to do right now as I'm picking up some of my tree or some of my beach color, that light tan. So if you had areas where you're like, wow, that was too much, just bring some of your beach sand back right on top of that shadow. Let them converge into one another. That's what's going to make it look really nice and natural. So if you've got areas that are a little bit rougher, just pull in a little bit of your beach sand or if they're a little bit too thick, pull in a little bit of that beach sand, just get them to converge. This, we're just giving the illusion of the, of a silhouetted um, a palm tree in the sand. And then just fiddle with it all you want. We're gonna actually be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got this done, I'm going back into my gray right now, putting a little bit more up in through here. Once you've got it the way that you want, you can put this medium brush away take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our seat of our swing as well as the woman. I'm gonna be using my chalk. You could certainly use any kind of drawing utensil that you would like. Um, I'm gonna be guiding you through a series of markers and basic shapes that we'll be able to utilize during the painting process. So no fine-tuned detail, just some nice basic shapes. So I'm gonna do my seat first. 
I'm going to have my seat kind of hanging about halfway between my horizon line and the bottom of my canvas. So if you find yourself about halfway on your horizon line, then you're going to come down about halfway between there and the bottom of your canvas, give or take a little bit. You can be a little higher or lower. And then you're going to come over to the right about an inch, inch and a half. So that's going to be my first marker right in through there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go at about the same height over to the left until I would say I'm about maybe two to three inches away or maybe three inches away from the edge of my canvas. And I'm going to come down from that about an inch and a half to two or maybe down from that, sorry, about an inch and a half, right about in through here is my next marker. And I sense I'm gonna have a little bit difficulty with my white piece of chalk for you guys to see. So I'm actually gonna change my color of chalk so you guys can see as I'm drawing these lines on my canvas. I'm gonna connect these two markers with a diagonal line. So something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, from here, I'm gonna make another diagonal line that's gonna be about an inch and a half, inch, inch and a half going up in this direction. I'm going to do the same thing to this one, only it's not going to be quite as long as that. So a little bit of a diagonal line at a, at a similar angle as I did here. And then I'm going to connect this corner to this corner with another diagonal line. So this is going to represent the seat of my swing. It should be a little bit smaller there than it is here. We've got it tipped at an angle. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the shape for my woman's body. So I'm going to come in from this corner of my... Um, swing about an inch somewhere in through here and then I'm gonna go up maybe about another two inches I'm almost at this point halfway between here and here so maybe a little shy of the halfway point is where I have this I'm gonna split the difference of these two and go straight up until I'm about an inch and a half away from the edge of my canvas so now I'm gonna connect these three markers with a really long kind of oval type of a shape so I'm gonna come straight up from here, and then right at the top, I'm just gonna curve it a little bit. I'll come straight up from here, like this, and then just curve it a little bit up at the top. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put her head on. So she's gonna have really long, wavy hair. I just really kinda of wanna get the top of the head and a real, basic kind of oval type of a shape so we have barriers when we go to paint in the hair. So I'm going to go a little bit higher than my horizon line somewhere in through here and I'm going to connect this down to the, the these would be the shoulders of her. So I'm going to go a little bit in the shoulder in through here and then just kind of give myself a oval type shape like that and I'm going to do the same thing like this. So it might look a little bit like a light bulb at this point. <laughs> It'll look much better once we put hair and stuff on, but it might look a little funny right now. So on the back side of this, I'm going to put um, a shoulder and her rear end. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to bump this shoulder out a little bit in through there, make it kind of blend in with that back. And then I'm going to bump, bump it out again for, this will be her rear end. We'll, we'll do something with that in a minute. Over on this right hand side, I'm gonna come, this is already her shoulder. I'm gonna come down a little bit and give her a little bit of a chest right in through here. So we can, so it looks like we're seeing her from the side. Now what I gotta do is I gotta give her a, a leg. So I'm gonna have her with one leg up and then the other leg, and the leg that's closest to us is gonna be up and the leg that's on the other side will be um, kind of laying down. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna take from here, this is gonna be her rear end in through here, and it's gonna be the bottom side of her thigh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come almost halfway between these two, so this is about halfway. I'm gonna make myself a little bit of a, of a marker right in through there. I'm gonna connect here to here. This is gonna be the bottom of her, her thigh and her rear end, but she's at a little bit of an angle, so the center of her rear end is right about here. So I'm gonna give a little bit of a curve like this, and then a little bit of a curve like this to meet up to that. And then I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit farther, almost about where her chest, uh, the bottom of her chest is. That's gonna be the underside of her knee I can bring this down, this is gonna be her calf, and then I'm gonna just put a little tiny foot on here. She doesn't need much for her foot right now because we're gonna be coloring that in and it's gonna be hardly visible. 
I'm going to come up this line just a little bit right in through here. I'm going to connect here to her ankle now with her knee. So I'm going to just bring this up a little bit of a kind of a rounded point in through there and then that'll be her knee. Her other leg is going to be hanging down the other side. So if I was to just kind of drop this knee on the other side, it would come out right about in through here. So I'm just going to give myself a little curved line like that. And then I'm going to come down on the other side of my um, swing in through here and in through here and give her a little bit of a foot hanging down in through here. So again, not much detail at all. And that is all we're going to do for our outline. It, you know, we will bend and twist it and make her look a little bit more feminine with the painting process. So you can put your chalk away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the seat of the swing and we're gonna do the base coat for our woman. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are brown, black, white, yellow, and pink. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some basic colors and a little bit of um, detail on my seat swing. And then we're gonna make a nice custom color for her, which will be a nice uh, like a suntan kind of color. So I'm gonna start with my seat. I'm gonna use brown paint to color in the base coat of my seat. I don't need to do anything fancy. I'm just really coloring it in. A lot of this seat is going to be hidden with her dress with you know other details to it so it's really not important to make it super perfect I just am going for something that looks a little like wood grain I just don't want to get lost in my drawing here so just slowing down making sure that I see where her foot is and if you don't get it perfect you, you know if you still have some of your chalk showing after this step you can certainly erase the chalk with a little bit of um water that gets rid of chalk really easily and I'm just kind of going right over my chalk so I can hide it or make it disappear then what I'm going to do I've got my base coat on my um on my seat so while that's drying I'm going to wash and dry my brush I'm going to make myself a custom color for her so I'm using uh, this is the custom color I'm going for I used brown yellow a little bit more yellow there, and pink. So this makes me a nice suntan skin color, which I'm also going to be utilizing as the base for her hair. So you can really customize this to whatever you'd like. I'm gonna put a little bit more pink and yellow in here so I can get a little bit more brighter. You could even use a little bit of white in it if you wanted it to be a lighter tone. So feel free to utilize whatever kind of shade of skin tone that you would like and if it doesn't turn out perfect and you're painting it on your um on your woman and you're like oh i wish this was a little bit different of a tone don't worry about that because we've got more steps to come that will be able to adjust that color so this is good color for me so i'm just going to be painting in her entire body as well as her um head and we'll do a base coat for her hair as well so i'm just kind of making sure that i find my way to my chalk marks. I'm bringing it all the way to my seat. And this is a time where if you're going about it and you're like, well, I wish her thigh was a little bit thicker or thinner or her leg was a little bit longer, now's the time to make those adjustments to the, the shape of her. Her legs are going to be fully covered with her dress, except for her feet. The reason why I'm choosing to do a base coat of like a skin color is so I want, I want my dress to be a little transparent or translucent. So you'll be able to see a little bit of her skin tone underneath that dress. So you can certainly, if you don't feel that you're gonna want to see through your dress, you could certainly totally skip this step with painting a skin tone on her, um, on her legs and you could just utilize the exterior shape when we build this, the dress, and that'll give you the shape of her body um, without need, needing to go through this step of it being 
um, see-through. And I'm just kind of bringing it down to her little toes and you can certainly make those into whatever size feet that you would like. Maybe you're doing this to represent somebody you know who has either larger or smaller feet and maybe you want to reshape the body too. This body does not have to be exactly as mine. As I've indicated it on here, you can certainly make your body into whatever shape you want because we all have different shape bodies. <laughs> and then I'm just going all the way down to the rear end and making sure I go all the way to the front. This is going to be her like belly area or midsection. So I'm leaving the head for last because I'm going to be putting um, the silhouette of her hair on there as well. This is her chest area and through there. So there we go. So now what I'm going to do for her hair is I'm going to just color in the center part. I don't really need to do anything fancy in through there. And then as I'm going towards the edges of the hair, I'm going to be thinking that this is going to be hair that's flying through the air, through the wind. So I'm going to just give myself these light airy kind of pieces along the edges. I don't need to do too much detail at this point because I'm going to be adding lots of details later, but you can pull out a couple little pieces like that. And then on the back side, I wanna kinda of give myself the footprint where I want all that long wavy hair to go. So I'm gonna have this extend pretty far um, past, her, past her head. So I'm gonna just kind of bring this down and I'm gonna have it kind of going over her shoulder, maybe bumping out in through here and then maybe just kind of catching catching the wind out in through here. And again, doesn't have to be perfect at this point because we're gonna have lots of stuff on top of her. But this is where you can even just merge it in with the back of her at this point because we're going to be um, putting a lot of stuff on top of that. that. That shoulder was just there to give you kind of a barrier or information where that hair might kind of drape over or fall over. I think I even want to bring this out a little bit further out in through here with these wispy pieces of hair just kind of flying in the wind. And we'll be putting different colors on it too. So once I've got that done, I'm going to just finish up my little um, seat. I'm washing and drying my brush. I just need to put a little shadow and highlight on it. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black paint, put a little bit of a shadow underneath her foot. So this is just a little bit of black paint giving me a little shadow underneath her foot. I want to put a little shadow behind her rear end. So a little bit of a shadow back underneath her rear end, something like this. And you can even bring it almost all the way back towards the back end of that. And then what, oh, maybe this needs to come over here too, because I guess her, her leg would shadow the whole kind of um, seat. So then I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm just going to pick up a little brown and white to do a tiny little highlight on the edge of the seat. So brown and white on my brush and this just gives me a little kind of three-dimensional edge to the seat. So I'm going to do it there and then I'll just do a tiny bit on this little back side over here. So just a little bit away from the edge you can bring this light little line and it'll make it look three-dimensional. And then we're going to be using this, uh, we're going to use our small brush. No, we're going to use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the dress. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are brown, white, and I might use some of my beach sand too. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that yet or not, but definitely brown and white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be um, separating out where I want her arm to go because her arm is, doesn't have a dress on it. So we're gonna just see the skin of her arm. And then um, I'm gonna give myself a couple of little strategic markers for how far I want the skirt to kind of drape over her foot and how far I want it to go down below. So I'm going to be using mostly white for the dress, but I want it to be look like it's see-through and have some transparency to it. So I'm going to start with a little bit of brown on my brush and white and water. So what I did was I picked up a little bit of brown, a little bit of white, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my brush in my water and tap it off on my paper towel. So I don't have much paint on my brush, 
but I have a lot of fluid in it and I have brown and white. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna separate out where I want her arm to go. So this is her shoulder. She's gonna have her arm kind of back and holding onto the side of the swing so she doesn't fall off. And we're just gonna see this arm. The other arm I'm assuming is hidden with her hair. So most people's um, elbow goes to about their waist, but her arm is swung back a little bit, so it's gonna be a little bit higher. So what I'm gonna do is I'm using, this is gonna be my dress color. I'm gonna actually kind of outline where I want the dress to go. So I'm outlining her arm, but it's part of the dress. <laughs> Something like that is gonna be the inside part or her um, bicep area. And then I'm gonna bring this down almost to the bottom of my um, swing and then just bring it over to the here. And then I'm gonna go a little bit to the left of this. And again, I don't have much paint on my brush. You could even use chalk to get this arm to um, kind of show up, I guess. I'm gonna just kind of go a little bit like that, right about where that elbow is. I'll just kind of start swinging it back down in through here. This is about where her wrist is. And then we'll put little fingers hanging over in a little bit. So that's gonna be that area. Right now on the back of her back, I'm going to pick up some more brown paint. I didn't wash my brush, but I want the back of her to be pretty dark. So I picked up brown on my brush. This is gonna be underneath her hair, and it's gonna be the back side of her dress. So I do have a touch of white, water, and brown on my brush to get this all to just kind of look like it is draping over on the dark side of her body. So something like that, I can bring it all the way to the edge so it gives it a little bit different of a tone than other areas. This is a nice dark combination that I'm also gonna use underneath her arm in through here. So again, this is still kind of like the, the dark side of her body. So I'm just making sure it looks like I've got some kind of fabric on it, but it, it's nice and dark because I've got that brown in there. And then once I've got in through this area, I can start to lighten up my, um, my fabric. So I'm gonna pick up a touch of white and water on my dirty brush so I can start to plan out where I want all of the um, brighter parts and the information to go on the, on the skirt. So this is gonna be bright on the top of her leg and I want to look like she has a little bit of a thigh and that her leg is kicked up. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a bright area in through here past her belly, so something like that. And then I can take this white paint, well, my dirty white <laughs> that's on my brush with the brown and just kind of illuminate the top of her leg and I'll start to pull it down. Uh, we are going to be making some other markers in a minute, but right now while the paint is kind of nice and wet on my brush, I'm gonna start just pulling this down over her leg. And it doesn't have to be straight. You can, if you curve it a little bit, that's going to allow for the curve of the leg to appear. So just getting this highlight to start working its way over this leg, and then you can just kind of pull it down. So now that I've got that part started, just kind of blend this in a little bit. I'm going to brighten up her chest area. So I'm putting a little bit of more white on my brush to get her chest to look like it's illuminated in the um, by the sun, so something like this. And this is one of those steps that if you're, if you're going about this and you're like, well, I want her dress to be a different color, you could certainly pick up a different color and allow it to um, be any color that you want. And I'm just playing with the translucency or the, the, um, the vibrancy of that brightness. So I just put more white paint on my brush so I can get this area to be really bright in through here. So just the more or the thicker the white is, the more you're gonna see it um, as white as opposed to just transparent fabric. I'm gonna now kind of mark my edges of where I want my skirt to go because I'm gonna start just being really free with the flow of the dress. So I'm gonna come maybe uh, um, about halfway into her foot or maybe like where her ankle is and just kind of come straight down. This is where I'm, or maybe off a little bit to the side. This is where I'm gonna have the little corner of my skirt, and then I'll come down from this corner, maybe about three inches or so, and come into the right a little bit. This will be just the bottom edge of my skirt. I'm gonna put a little bit of white 
plus water on my dirty brush. So again, because my brush is dirty, it might not be totally white. I'm gonna go over this foot a little bit. So this is, again, just gonna kinda give me the flow or the edge of my skirt. I'm gonna give it a lot of movement. I'm gonna bring this up in through here, maybe hide her foot a little bit in through here. I just picked up a little bit more white so you guys can see what I'm doing in through here. And this will give me the bottom edge of it. And now I'm gonna just kind of start pulling it up in through here. So I'm pulling it up in a direction that I feel the fabric would be moving or falling. And because I have that white and water and a little bit of brown, you can detect the brown right here, that's gonna give it the, um, the, the depth. And now I can start kind of just rubbing it over her whole, her whole body in through here. When I get to an area where it's draping over the seat, I put a little bit more um, white on my brush and I can get it to drape over the seat like this to give the illusion that the skirt is kind of bunching up in that area. I wanted to make sure that it blends into her, her back area in through here so you can just kind of pull it up into here with a little bit of that water on your brush to just again make it nice and transparent so you're seeing right through it but you've got that that depth of the of the um of the skirt so now i'm going to pick up white and i'm going to really start to be nice and heavy heavy handed with my white i want it really bright up here at the top and i'm going to have it the brightest at the top and you can even bump it out past her leg if you want it to look like it is, you know, got some ripples and stuff in it. Bring it out past there. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine. Maybe it goes over this ankle part if you wanted to, and maybe it comes back in and, and kind of flows out, like the wind is taking it. And then I just get this to blend down and kind of out to make it look like it is going around her, around her leg. So now I'm gonna just keep elevating that highlight around her leg and then it'll get darker and darker as I come down that skirt and, or darker because you're seeing through it more. So I just kind of rub it in and we've got some light spots and some darker spots which are gonna make it look nice and transparent or translucent. And I just keep fiddling with it. I've got her hand which is gonna be in through here so I don't want to necessarily um, do all of that area because her hand's going to go on it, but I also don't want to skip it. So I'm making sure that I bring some of this lightness over in through here. And you can put a little bit of liquid medium or water on your brush in order to get these colors to just blend out a little bit and make sure that you've got as much transparency or translucency as you want. And again, the brighter that you get that fabric to go, the more you'll be able to see it and the more you'll be able to see it in front of the other objects. But having that transparency is just gonna give you that added illusion to it. So you can keep fiddling. If you do something that you don't like, you can always bring back your original color that we had underneath. And then we're gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, fiddle with it as much as you want, and then you can put this uh, medium brush away as, as I'm like, I just want to fiddle some more. Um, fiddle as much as you want, as I fiddle as much as I want. And then we'll be using our um, small brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish her skin. So this is going to be her arm and her two feet in through here. I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors that I'm going to use are black, my skin tone, and white. And if I need to go into any other colors, I certainly will and I'll let you know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a shadow on the back side of her arm. So it'll be on the back side of her upper arm and her bottom arm. I'm going to add some little fingers on her as well. We'll put highlights on her shoulder and the front side of her arm. I'm considering the light source to be on the right side of her, so that'll illuminate the right side of her arm. And then on her toes and her feet, I'll put a little uh, shadow on the left side and a highlight on the right side, shadow 
on the bottom-ish, which we've kind of already done that, and a highlight as well. So I'm going to start with the arm because it'll be the most difficult of them all. <laughs> so I've got my small brush. I'm picking up some of my skin tone plus black on my brush. So this is going to be the back side of her arm in through here. She's got her little elbow in through here and then the back side down in through here. I really just want this to look like it's in the shadows of her hair or her back or whatnot. So I'm going pretty dark on this um, and I don't need to go total detail up and through here because this is all going to be hidden by her hair. So I'm only going up about as high as her mid chest for my detail of it. So I've got black plus my skin tone on my brush right now. I'm going to go down into the elbow area. I'm going to pull this down underneath the elbow in through here and I'm picking up more of my skin tone right now to get it to blend in. So I started with black and my skin tone. Now as I'm moving towards the right, I'm picking up more of my skin tone to get it to blend in. I am going to do a little bit around the elbow, but you don't necessarily need to do too much because the elbows will pop out a little bit. So they'll have, they'll be typically look a little bit lighter than um, the skin next to it when you're in a backside like this. So that's why I'm leaving that elbow just a little bit lighter and then I'm going to again pick up more of my skin tone just to make sure that I've got this all colored in and through here I'm gonna while this is settling for a minute I'm gonna go put some little fingers on so I'm picking up some of my uh, skin tone and if this is her hand in through here I'm just gonna pull down a couple little fingers so I don't think we'd see her thumb so I'm just going to pull down a couple of fingers over this edge in through here so one two three <laughs> make sure you count your fingers right because people looking will notice if you have a wrong number <laughs> but if you're doing a little impressionistic kind of way and you don't necessarily need to see the detail in all of them it's okay if you don't have exactly the same number or length of them so that's looking pretty good I'm going to let that dry for a second while I go do um, her shoulder area. So I'm gonna put my skin tone plus white on my brush so I can do a little bit of a highlight um, on this right hand side. So I want the brightest area to be right over here on the right hand side, something like that. I'm gonna have a little bit of a highlight on her bicep in through here and maybe a little bit on her forearm in through here and then on her fingers as well in a minute, but I'm gonna let, I'm still waiting for those to dry. And I just picked up some more of my skin tone to get this to blend in, something like that. More of my skin tone on my dirty brush. So that's where you're seeing the little bit lighter streaks of it. And I'm just getting it to kind of blend in with that midsection or that mid-tone. Same thing with her shoulder up and through here. Might add a little bit more lightness on the shoulder because it's up higher. So it's closer to the light source in my opinion. So I just put a little bit more white plus my skin tone on just to bring this highlight a little bit further back. So it looks like we've got, she's illuminated a little bit more up and through here because again, to me it's closer to the light source and that's looking pretty good. I might adjust it a little bit after it's dry, but it's a good start for me. And if you need to do anything like, I feel like maybe in through here is a little, I need to uh, blend it with the, uh, the dress. I just picked up just brown paint just to kind of clean up that little end or edge in through there where it was meeting the, um, the dress. So if you need to clean up any of those little edges, feel free to do so. I'm gonna hit the hand now. So I'm washing and drying my brush, picking up a little bit of white in my skin tone, and I'm gonna give myself some, the, the lightness to the top of her hand in through here, and then maybe a couple little highlights on these fingers as they're just kind of coming around. One, two, three, four. And then I can put a little bit of my skin tone just to give them a little bit of dimension. I don't need to do much just something that's gonna make it look like she's out in the sunshine. Maybe a little shadow underneath her hand. So I'm picking up a tiny bit of black paint just to make sure we've got a little shadow underneath that hand. Not totally necessary, but again, just, you know, doing the things that I feel 
would look right. And again, of course, if you needed to reshape any of that, you could certainly do that. I'm gonna move on to her toes right now, or her feet. So I'm gonna put a little bit of my um, skin tone plus white. I might just need to do a little highlight on these toes and the top of the foot and be done with it. It might just work out where that's all I need. Maybe if you feel like you have a little ankle bone in there, you could certainly do that, or a little highlight to her heel, you can do that. Then I'm gonna just pick up a tiny bit of white, give her just a little, little bright spot on the tip of her toe and the top of her foot in through here. And then this one down here, I'm just gonna like swipe it down with a little bit of of white, little little tip to her toe. Nothing, nothing major. I'm putting a tiny bit of um, black and and my um, skin tone on just to give her a little tiny shadow right up in this underside of her foot, like it's the like we're seeing the backside of this foot as opposed to the side like we are on the other one. And then I would just let it dry, step back, see if there's any more fiddling that I want to do. We're going to use our um, medium brush for the next step. So you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the swing ropes and finish her hair. I'm going to use my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, yellow, white, and that might be it. And I'll, if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to um, put her, we'll call it the second layer of her hair on. I'm going to start with some brown paint on my brush. And really, I want her hair to look layered and wavy and stuff. So I'm using this brown paint as the second tonal value or color to her hair. So I'm going to be bringing it in um, the directions that I feel her hair is kind of flowing. I'm leaving some of those little, some little peekaboo spots of that, um, of that skin color underneath, just so we have some nice kind of chestnutty type of look. When I get over to this shoulder area and now, and the left side, this is where I'm going to start to pull out these smaller strings of hair. So like in this area over here, I can take my my brown and just kind of pull out these pretty like falling strands of hair. I'm going to pull this over her shoulder in through here. Hair is awesome for movement in your paintings, especially since we're on a swing on the beach, we can make this hair move whatever way we want. So I'm pulling it kind of over in this way. Think of like waves to the ocean. It just kind of flows and you want it to, you know, naturally go around things. So it would naturally go like around her shoulder and you'd have little peekaboo spots where you can see the ocean through it. Down here, I'm going to bring some nice longer pieces right along her back and maybe just some skinnier pieces. So if you want skinnier pieces, I'm adding a bit of water to my brush just so I can really, well, that's a long piece of hair. <laughs> so I can really, maybe we'll get rid of that long, long one. <laughs> so I can really just get these tiny little skinny edges to it. And again, I'm using it on top of that original um, skin color that we used so it looks like it's got some nice layers and dimension to it and then i'm gonna put a little bit of darkness in here as well in a minute to make it look like we're on the back side of her head and like there's going to be some shadows in it but first i'm just kind of getting setting the stage for the flow of her hair as it's being flown in the wind so this is looking pretty good to me and again if you still have some of that um, original color. That's awesome. That's where the dimension is going to come in. Now I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm picking up a tiny bit of black paint so I can give just these little shadowy areas in the back side of her head. Um, so it looks like the hair kind of dips in where her um, the back of her head is. And this is one of those, again, just a little kind of dimensional trick that's going to allow you to get more um, depth in that object and if you felt that you wanted a couple of little pieces of darker hair coming down her back you could certainly do that and we're going to put the lighter stuff on the exterior so it allows it to 
look like we're seeing, you know, we've got the interior and the exterior exposed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, wa wash and dry my brush. I'm going to be marking off where I want my ropes to go. So I'm going to be starting my ropes with just black and water on my brush so that way I have some fluidity to it. So I definitely know that my ropes are going to come up off the corners of my um, of my swing. So I'm going to just kind of give myself a little bit of a marker here on the corner. I've got one on this corner in through here and then I've got one on this corner in through here. I have another corner hidden behind her I almost called it a paw, hidden behind her foot. So I know that that's gonna be, it, my rope is gonna come out from there at some point. So I'm gonna just kind of go up and to the right just a little bit from there so I have that information. Then what I can do is kind of split the difference of these two and come straight up to right about my horizon line. That's where I'm gonna have my rope splitting. So somewhere about here. And then I'll do the same thing over here. So split them somewhere in the middle and come right up. I'm gonna, um, her head is here. So I'm just gonna go right up at the top of the head so you can see where my marker is gonna go. We'll still split it right, right about where it gets into her hair. So now that I've done that, I need to find the same spots up top. So you can use anything as a measuring tool. You can use another paintbrush and say, okay, I put this one here. I can measure it to the edge of my brush and then go up to the top, make yourself another marker. So in through here, this one is just a little bit further than my brush. So I go up to the top at about the same distance and make myself another marker. So I guess I could have done it this way. <laughs> so that looks good and that looks good. So now I'm just gonna start connecting my dots. So black plus a little bit of water on my brush. I'm gonna connect here to, and we're gonna hide, uh, this is gonna have a lot of disguising elements like flowers and stuff on it. So if yours isn't perfectly straight, don't worry about it. So again, just black plus a little bit of water on my brush. And you can hide these ropes pretty wide. I mean, that's a big, huge swing. So if they are wide, that's, that's great. So just something like this is gonna get me to, it needs to be a sturdy rope in order to hold up the, the swing. And then when I get to this part about my horizon line, I'm going to, I'm going to split it, split my rope. So again, just reloading my brush and I'm going to take this and just keep my eye on the prize, which is my, my next marker. So just something like this and bring myself right to here. And then this one's going to go right to here. And then on the back side of her, I'm going to take it, I'm going to bring it down just a little bit further into her head. So right about to my horizon line. And then I'll take this, even if you go through wet paint, black paint will overpower the, the other colors. So just paint right on top of them and right through them and just bring it right to, to that marker. And then I'll do the same thing with here. So just reload my brush with my black paint and this is going to go right over her rear end. Hold on, I need to reload my brush and then just bring this right to here. So now that I've got that, I'm going to put little ties and strings underneath. So just go right below your, um, your swing, make a little ball. And then I want this to kind of look like they're being blown in the wind, just like her hair. So I'm just going to bring these little kind of fun strings out in that direction. So same thing, just go directly below your your um, marker up top and then just bring these little strings out in a flowy kind of way. I'll do the same thing over here on the right side. Give myself a little bit of a knot of sorts and then just kind of bring out some nice little flowy strings. I don't think I'd see that one over on that side so we're going to skip that one. So now that I've got this done I'm going to finish my ropes while my hair is kind of drying because I want my hair to look like it's kind of blowing around my ropes which is why we're kind of doing these together. So I'm just going to pick up some yellow and white paint to give myself some little highlights. Yellow and white paint on my brush at the same time. I'm going to go down the right hand side with these little um, kind of curved marks. So on the right hand side I'm just going to kind of bring these little curved marks down. You could use brown too, I suppose, if you wanted to. I'm just 
looking to make this look like it's got some, I think actually I'm using brown too. So brown, yellow, and white. It was a little too bold on my yellow, so I added brown to the equation. And I'm just kind of doing these little curved marks on the right hand side. And you can make them small or large, however thick you want your, your rope to be is totally fine. I've got mine extending a little bit past the rope. It's the black mark, so that way it makes it look like it's a little three-dimensional. I'll even put some on my little strings coming down in through here, and the yellow is going to help it to look different from the, um, from the sand and from the water below. So that's where you get those, um, the evidence of the, um, the dimensional elements. And then I'm going to go ahead and do that to the other side. So yellow, brown, and white all on my brush at the same time. I'm going to give myself these just chaotic kind of little twisty marks going down my rope. I'm going to down her, the back of her. You'd almost be in the shadows in through here, so I'm not going to do much there. And then, I mean, you could do maybe a little bit more brown. I picked up a little bit more brown, but I'm going to hide that with her hair. So I'm just going to kind of come down in through here, maybe add a little bit of a dimensional element there. And then down here, we're going to also have flowers on these. So I'm not going to do a whole heck of a lot right now. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to create a lighter color for her hair. So wash and dry my brush. I'm going to have like kind of like a milk chocolate kind of color as her highlights plus white. So I'm going to take uh, brown and a little bit of white and I'm thinking that that might be good. <laughs> Maybe a touch of yellow also so it's a little bit more on the golden side. So brown, yellow, and white is giving me this nice kind of light brown color that I'm going to be using as the highlights for her hair. I'll use this plus white. So this is where I'm going to start and of course you can change the the color of it as much as you want and this is where I'm going to start to get it to overlap in front of the rope so my, my nice kind of light brown color I'm going to really work on getting the um, the direction of that hair to be where I want it. So just slow down, give myself these little marks to uh, tell the viewer what direction the hair is going as well as what shape the head is. So this is also where I'm gonna start to put some lighter pieces over on this other side as if they are being pulled by the wind and kind of wrapping around. So as you're doing this, again, just kind of slow down. I'm gonna work my way towards the lighter um, hair, but you don't need to do much. I, I'm, I'm building this from the dark to the light. Right now I'm going over the, um, the rope a little bit. So this again is gonna add that dimensional element to it. I'm bringing this around as if it's the shape of her head. So I'm bringing it on top of that those prior colors that we did. Now I can pull some of this down over her arm. So I can bring this in this way where it looks like it's kind of resting over her and it's being maybe blown in different directions and just kind of resting over her arm or just kind of flying over the rope, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. I'm gonna bring some of these lighter pieces around the edge in through here and over on the side. And then once I've got these pieces on, I will add one more last little flick of brightness. So I'm gonna use my light brown plus white on my brush. So my light brown, or my that custom brown that we just made plus white. And this is where I'm gonna put these real bright highlights on the front of her. And of course you could, you know, make this into any kind of different tonal value that you want, but I'm just sticking with that lightness plus white on my brush. And of course you could use a smaller brush too if you wanted to use your, your tiny brush in order to get individual little pieces. Um, and if you go too light, you can always bring back some of the other colors. So don't feel or fear that if you you know, went too light that you can't reverse it. That's the beautiful part about painting is you get to just kind of keep adding layers until you get it the way that you want and you can continue to um, build the dimensional elements of it. And I'm just kind of um, giving just these little hints of these bright 
pieces along the edges. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple little pieces over here, just like they're being you know, wrapped around and catching the, the edge. And if you go in front of your rope by accident and you want to go behind the rope, again, just know that you can certainly put that rope back on or do any little adjusting that you, that you see is fit. And then just keep fiddling with it as much as you want. We're going to be using, oh, I like these light pieces down at the bottom. We're going to use this same uh, medium brush for the next step. Oh, yeah. These little light tips at the edges, those are looking pretty. Um, so once you've got this done, you can uh, wash and dry this, um, me I like painting hair, sorry. It's tough to talk as I'm like really enjoying painting the hair, but anyways. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some flowers on our swing. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors I'm gonna use are pink, white, brown, green, maybe some yellow too. Uh, maybe, not sure yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just make some pretty tropical-y type of impressionistic flowers. You could certainly make any kind of flowers that you'd like, but I'm just gonna have fun and just use my intuitive thoughts to create these fun, bright, summery flowers. So I'm gonna start with um, pink, did I say, I don't even know if I said I was using pink, but I'm definitely using pink. I'm using pink and white on my brush at the same time. So pink and white, and this is gonna give me kind of a footprint of where I want these flowers, and then we'll build some details off of them after that. So I'm gonna just kind of do some generic uh, style of flower, which is just gonna have a whole bunch of little petals coming off of it like that. You can make yours bigger or smaller. You can have just like little buds here and there, just like little dots to represent the flowers. You can have bigger ones, like maybe I've got a big, huge one in through here. Maybe I've got some coming off the top of my canvas like this. So feel free to make the assortment as large or as small as you want. You could even do like a whole, I don't know, bouquet of sorts going across the top and bordering the sides. That's gonna be a visual preference on your part. But right now, again, I'm just starting with my, um, my pink and my white on my brush at the same time to give me the start of my flowers lining this um, fun, swing that I wish I was on. <laughs> and then I'm gonna, it, because we're using two colors at the same time, this is allowing for these wonderful different tones within the flowers. So maybe one of them is more white than the other. Maybe one of them is more pink than the other. And this is just a great way to give diversity in, in flowers and in things of that nature so you don't have just one solid color. So I'm thinking like that's a good amount. Maybe, maybe we'll have like a little one behind this one just to give it a little second pop of a, of a flower there. I'm gonna put a couple down in through here too. So again, just pink and white. So these might, you know, end up covering up your whole, um, details that you put back here but that again it is going to be on your control if you if you want there to it to hide something then hide it like if you don't want that not to show just hide that knot if you want there to be you know some coming up put some coming up up the rope that'll be again up to you i'm just going to put a little one in through here you know what i think i'm gonna i think i'm gonna hide this little this little knot here. I like them going across the back. Like <laughs> They look pretty to me, so I'm just gonna do it. I'm not gonna put any on the front. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put some leaves going throughout here too. So wash and dry my brush. I'm picking up green to start. So this will just kind of give me my um, little footwork of or lay out my, my thoughts. Maybe you have little vines coming out. Maybe you have really long leaves coming out behind the, the flowers. This, again, it's gonna be your own visual preference. Maybe I've got some 
up in through here. I'm just trying to make like one side look a little bit different than the other so it looks a little bit more organic and natural as opposed to, you know, the florist coming and putting everyone spaced exactly the way that it should be. I'm just trying to maybe emulate like they're, they've, they're growing on this swing and it's just a beautiful tropical little oasis that has wonderful floral elements to it. And then I, I think I'm gonna put a couple down in through here too. And this helps these little pops of different colors really help to break up certain aspects to or tie things together. So if you're feeling like the painting, it needs a little more energy, bringing in a pop of a, of a color, but yet tying it to something else or tying it, you know, put up here and down here, that'll help to tie things together. So now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white on my dirty brush. So I have green and white, and I'm just gonna put some little highlights on my leaves in through here. So just while it's still wet, or while I still have, you know, the, the green on my brush, using the green plus the white, again, speaks to that two-tone, um, one-stroke kind of application where you get to utilize multiple tones without even giving it much thought because you've got them on your brush and you're giving that um, illusion kind of on the fly. I'll do the same thing down here. And these flowers back underneath her could be seemingly a little bit darker than the ones up there because they're kind of set back, but that's up to you. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush now. I'm gonna do my little details on my flowers. So I'm gonna pick up pink and brown, and I'm gonna use this as a little center for some of my flowers. So I have pink and brown. I'm not gonna do centers to all of them, but maybe a couple of them. Maybe that one's got one, maybe this one's got one. And you can do it light or dark. So again, pink and brown will give me um, a nice kind of diversity in those centers. And I'm working on wet paint, so when I run into it being wet in one place, I'm totally okay with that because I like these colors to just kind of merge in with one another. Maybe this looks like there's a couple of flowers down here. So we've got two little centers there and the centers obviously will tell the viewer how many um, how many flowers are there. Mm, I think and that's pretty pretty good. Maybe maybe one more up there. And that one maybe we'll see the side. So then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put some little highlights on here. So I am gonna use pink and white again for my high highlights, but I may use a little bit more white. So I've got white and pink on my brush. So if I wanna just go and do a second layer on my petals, I can use just white. I can use white and pink. And I'm saying that this is a highlight, but it's really just kind of another lay oops that was a more of a leaf than a lay, than a petal um, it's more of just kind of another layer for these petals it allows me to make sure that i have um them fully painted maybe maybe one of them like maybe this little side one's a little bit more white pick up a little bit more pink and now i can have a pink one and a white one kind of sitting next to each other so I'm utilizing this just second pass in order to one, maybe add some little highlights, maybe give a little bit more um, vibrancy or a little bit more detail to it. Maybe this one is, maybe we're just seeing the side of this one. Maybe I'll pull these down in through here and maybe we're just seeing the side of this one because I didn't put a center. So maybe I just pull all those petals down like that so you can you know just have fun with what whatever you're feeling the direction of those petals is going just go for it if i want a little brighter area in through here i just picked up some more pink and gave that a little bit more brightness to it and then i'll go ahead and do my ones down below so these ones i think i want a little bit darker so i'm going to use a little bit more of my pink maybe in it and just as if maybe they're down in the shadows behind her. And again, you can utilize flowers to hide things or disguise things or give things life. So just have fun with it. And then once you've got this, I think I need a, a tent or put this little center back. Once you've got these in whatever way is making your painterly eye happy, step back from it, see if there's any additional things that you want to do, like you could put little tiny buds here and there, up and down your um, 
your rope. I think I need green and white. I forgot these little leaves up here, so I'm picking up green and white. Get the little highlights on these little leaves. They look like they were disappearing on me. And then we're gonna use this small brush, or no, we'll use, this is our medium brush. We'll use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful flowers arranged, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm gonna go bottom right with white. I'm using my small brush. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you feel it would be your identifying mark. That's totally fine. You get to sign it however you like because it's your painting. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful summer image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.